Hi, my name is Scott McLeod. I'm a member of the Nautel customer service team and today I'll be talking to you about the VR Link, which is Nautel's remote control used to interface the Vector Series NDB transmitters to a web-based remote application. Um, here I have two units. One is a VR Link and one is a VR Link 2. They perform the same function. Uh, the VR Link 2 has more options. So when you're purchasing the unit, please consult the sales staff and they'll guide you to the unit that is correct for you. Um, today we're going to be talking about the inputs and outputs of the VR Link, um, how to connect it to the transmitter, how to set the IP information up, and we'll go through the web-based control and show you how to set up different things in the web-based application when it's connected to a Vector 125 transmitter. The connections to the Vector, or the VR Link, sorry, are all at the back. You have an AC input, which is 100 to 240 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz. Um, the VR Link 2 also has, the op uh, has a DC option, so you can feed in 24 volts or 48 volts. Um, the VR Link interfaces with the Vector series transmitter through an RS-232 or 422 connection. And they're the same on the VR Link 1 and 2. The output of the VR Link, the IP or web-based application, comes out of the LAN connection here for the VR Link. And for the VR Link 2, there's a couple ports depending on your option. There's a LAN connection in the front as well. Um, please, and it will depend on what options you have with the VR Link. So you'll have VR Link 2. So you'll have to consult your book to determine what options you have. Um, the only other connections we have are RS-485 connections, which are used to interface with an ECMP or an extended control monitor panel. These are optional panels. In this VR link. I have one ECMP connected and I've got it mounted inside the VR link unit. And we'll talk about how to set up these switches and how to operate it uh, when we get to the web based remote control. Uh, now, what I'm going to show you is the first step, which is setting the IP information up uh, on the vector so that we can connect it to our network. So, I have plugged AC power into the VR link and I have connected my laptop computer to the LAN connection on the VR link. And what we're going to do is set up the IP information on the VR link. This is something you'll have to do and you'll have to get the IP information from your network administrator. Uh, we can also set the system, the VR link, to uh, DHCP if your network is going to assign the IP information. And I'll show you how to do that. There's two methods to do it. One is using hyperterminal and one is using uh, an IP setup program. The IP setup program I find easier, so I will demonstrate that one. Both of which, the hyperterminal setup and the IP setup, are in the transmitter manual. On my, in my VRLink manual, they start on page 2.5. So the first set thing we have to do if we're using the IP setup is we need that program. To get that program, we go to the netburner.com website. This is not a Nautel website, this is a device that is used in the VR link and it's their website. And we go to support public downloads and this website, the netburner.com website, is listed in the VR link manual. And in the public downloads you will see IP setup and we're going to download this application. I'm just going to run it. And here it is, and this is our VR link. Now if I power down the VR link, we'll see it go away and come back. So I've just unplugged the VR link. I'll try searching again. And you can see it is not present. I'm going to apply power to the VR link again. Hit search again. I'll have to hit it a couple times because it may take a while for the net burner to do its boot up.
try it a few more times. Sometimes you have to set your computer for the same subnet for it to, for it to detect the net burner. So we may have to do that. Let's try closing and reopening the application first. And there we go. It took a little while, but it found it. This is our VR link, and there is the current IP information. And this is the default information that every VR link is set up for. That is the IP information. So here we can change it, the IP. If we want to set it for DHCP, then we set all these values to zero. If we want it, just change the information, then we just write in the new information. Let's just change it to 200, I guess. And we hit set. And that changes the IP information for the VR link. I'm going to have to search a couple more times. There it is. And it's got the new IP information. So now the IP, instead of starting with 192, I've just changed it to 200. So once we have the IP information up, we can connect it to a transmitter and start setting up our web page. So what I'll do now is I will connect the VR link to a VR one, uh, Vector 125 NDB transmitter, and I will show you the web-based program. Okay, so now that we have the VR link IP setup and we have it set up for an IP address of 200.168.1.93 now we're going to connect it to our vector 125 NDB transmitter now to do that I need a RS 232 or 422 cable I'm going to use 232 um, in the vector you're going to verify that in RCMS settings the serial settings are set to direct. So they're set to direct, we're good. And I connect one end of my RS-232 cable to the remote interface board, RS-232 on my transmitter. Now, if this was a real install, the cable would be fed through the back, just like all the other cables. Um, and the other end, I'm gonna connect to my RS-232 connection on the back of my VR link. Now there are jumpers on one of the boards in here. If I want to set it to RS-422, I have to change the position of two jumpers and then I can use 422. But I have it set for 232 so we're connected. Um, now all I'm going to do is we're going to go back on our computer, type in the IP address and call up the web page. So we're going to open to get to the web application, we just open up an internet browser. I'm going to use Internet Explorer. And type in the IP address of the VR link, which is 200.168.1.93. And we go to the page. And this is the first page of our NX Link remote control, or our VR link. This is the home page. Now I can log in. If this is the first time you've logged in, um, the username is root, all lowercase, R-O-O-T, and the password is Nautel, all lowercase, N-A-U-T-E-L. And this is in the trans, in the, sorry, in the VR link manual, um, and it tells you what the username and password is. So now we're logged in. Now I have some selections here that I can do. I can go to user administration. Now user administration is where I set up new users. So I'm going to set up a user Scott. Password will be test. T -E -S -T. And then I can select what rights I want. 
Uh, a user administrator can create new accounts. Site configuration, if I just click site configuration, I can change settings in the transmitter, but I cannot create new accounts. Uh, equipment control, they can control the transmitter. Site con configuration, sorry, is configuring, not just control. And user admin, if I click all three, I become a super user and I can do anything. So I'll just create an account where I have equipment control. And now I have another user that I can log in as. So if I log out, I can log back in as me. And I'm logged in. Now, if you are not logged in, I'm going to log back out and we'll go back in as the super user in a sec. You can still view the transmitter. So I'm not logged in right now, but I can still view all the statuses of the transmitter. As you can see, this RF power is off, it's in remote mode. From here, I can change things. I can't change anything, sorry. I can just view because I'm not logged in. So let's log back in as the super user. And here we go. So user administration is just to create new users with limited control if that's what you want. In site configuration, uh, we can set up different things. This screen, we can set up the refresh rate of the web page. So right now the ref refresh rate is 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds the web page will refresh. Remote panels is for the ECMP, which we can set up all the switches and the buttons. So if I go into the inputs right now, and this is the ECMP and I'll zoom out and show it to you again in a sec. It has three switches and a number of lights um, that we can change the meaning of. So right now we have RF power, toggle, time shutdown. So these are the switched inputs and I can change them to whatever I want. Now if we had multiple ECMPs connected, we would see more than one panel here, say panel one, panel two, and so on. So you can configure this up however you want. The audible alarm is, if you have your speakers on, on your computer and you set an alarm, it can trigger uh, a WAV file to play on your computer. So right now we have low AC, change over and shut down. We can add another one. The device is VR125. Let's pick RF power and we'll just say when RF power is off, I want it to play a sound. Once I submit it, it's still thinking. Now I'm just going to mute my computer because I don't want to hear that right now. So since my transmitter is RF off now, that is the WAV file. So we'll go back in and just deselect that. And you can select any alarm or status for this. Just change that to none and submit. The email server application does not function. It does not function. You cannot get automatic email notifications, so we won't talk much about that. We will go into the Vector 125 now for the control. Here you have full control, and you, in site configuration, you can change these pages if you want. Um, I wouldn't because there's pretty well every setting is listed now. We can turn the transmitter on. 
The transmitter is now on. We can increase power. Oh, is that 28 watts now? We also have 28 watts reflected because I do not have it connected to a dummy load. If we had an ATU connected through the serial connection of the transmitter, we could also control that. Let's turn the transmitter back off. That was the ECMP configuration, just setting an alarm. Um, so there is any number of things you can, you can control almost everything locally that you can do with the transmitter, you can control with this web application. Uh, one of the things you cannot do is you cannot reset up thresholds from the system. You can increase and decrease power. You can turn modulation on and off, although you can't lower it or increase it. Um, but you can't recompute thresholds. But other than that, you've got a full set of meter readings. You've got alarms listed, if there's any alarms. An events log. that lists all the events. Apparently we have a whole bunch of low voltage power supply faults listed. Um, and you can actually go into an event and it will tell you um, all of the statuses during that time. And you can see now on the screen it says logged event. So we're not looking at a live status. We're actually looking at an event from uh, a different time, 11, three, an hour ago my time. So that's about it uh, for the VR link. Um, so when you do get your unit, uh, some things to keep in mind if you have problems connecting to the VR link, uh, after you set the IP address, try cycling power to the VR link. If you can't use the IP setup to detect the net burner, then do the hyperterminal method. And that's our session on the web. So once again, here's the whole system. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about this little panel here, which is the extended control monitor panel. Now there are a few different versions of this as well. This does not have to be mounted at the VR link. It could be mounted away from the VR link and connected at the back like we discussed earlier with uh, three wires for the RS-485 connection. Uh, right now it's showing the RF is off, I can actually, I have this switch set to turn it on. Now the switch actually looks like it's in the on position, but it's controlled by a rising edge. So if I want to turn it on, I would toggle to the off position and then on. And you can see my RF on light comes on here and the front panel of my transmitter shows it is now on. Um, the other thing with this version of the ECMP is alarms are tied to a buzzer, so I'm going to turn it off. And off is an alarm and you get this audible alarm. This version of the ECMP has a acknowledge button that will turn off the audio alarm but keep the indication. And all this is configured in our VR link in our remote panel section where I can, I can change this switch to be changed from side A to side B. It can be whatever I want. Um, these are all, the lights are also user configurable. We have them silk screened on the ECMP, how they come out of the factory, but you can change them to whatever you want. It is a very versatile system um, and it can do a lot of things. So that's it for our presentation on the VR link. Um, if you have any questions or any issues with your VR link setup, uh, please contact customer support.